I very much hope that you will join me in an exploration of New York City during the late 19th century, the so-called Gilded Age, and the early 20th century known as the Progressive Era. Our focus then will be on the 1870s to the 1910s, uh, but we'll touch on related important developments earlier and later. New York City has been important in my life and academic careers. My immigrant parents entered the United States by way of Ellis Island. They took initial American jobs there, and they met on the Ellis Island Ferry. Marrying, they lived in New York City for half a century. I lived with my parents in Manhattan and then Brooklyn through college years before exploring America in graduate school, Connecticut and Iowa, the United States Army, Georgia and Alabama, and academia, first in California, later in New York City, and for 40 years at Vanderbilt and in Nashville. Wherever I have taught, I have focused on research and writing on New York City and that area of the Northeast, especially during the late 19th century. New York City had become the nation's most populous by 1810. The hemisphere's most populous by 1860. This when it comprised only Manhattan and after 1874, a sliver of the Bronx. In 1898, greater New York City, the city as we know it, came into existence. Manhattan, Brooklyn, uh, the nation's third most populous city at the time of its absorption, Queens, the Bronx, and Staten Island. New York City was now the world's second most populous city behind only London. We'll note factors that contributed to the remarkable growth of New York City. Some of them natural, others involving human action, whether private or governmental. Like a magnet, New York City attracted immigrants and migrators. We'll look at four major immigrant groups. First, the Irish and Germans, later uh, East European Jews and Italians. Uh, and two smaller groups that migrated to New York City largely from other parts of the United States. African Americans from the South, Chinese uh, largely from the West. We'll consider the group's backgrounds and how these affected their lives in New York City. We'll also deal with ethnic, religious, and racial conflicts that flared in the metropolis. New York City's economy during the 1870s, 1910s differed in important respects from that of cities that relied on heavy industry, most significantly iron and steel production. New York's economy was characterized by a spread of consumer-based industries, uh, garments uh, in, most famously. Uh, we'll also examine the economic basis of Lower Manhattan, the Wall Street area, where office buildings, not factories, rose to new heights during the late 19th century. Now, New Yorkers overwhelmingly lived in the city in which they worked. And so we'll comment on the housing in which they lived and the neighborhoods containing these structures. 
whether upper class and middle class single family dwellings, French flats or apartments as they came to be called, or tenement houses for the working class and the poor. The further, the expansion of New York City and the growth of its population placed major and increasing demands on public transportation. We'll comment on street surface transportation, elevated trains, L's in New York City slang, and on subways. Ferry boats had long crossed the city's river. Now bridges did likewise over the East and Harlem rivers, though not until later, 1931, was the Hudson River bridged. Finally, we will note major disasters, whether natural, the blizzard of 1888, or accidental, three major fires and of the toll of all too frequent tenement house fires, one of which killed my wife's great-grandfather and his young son. Dangerous communicable diseases that necessitated governmental and private responses during the period, cholera, tuberculosis, polio, will also be discussed. Fellow explorers of New York City, I will welcome your questions and comments during and after my presentations and will provide you with some leads on which you can operate. Thank you.